of you to thank Him. And uh, I said something this morning about numbers. Numbers. And different numbers in the Bible representing things. In Hebrew and Greek, every letter has a numerical value. You know, like you say your Roman numerals, uh, X was 10 and X1 was 11 and uh, all that stuff and C and M, whatever, D, whatever. I forget what all they are. Are y'all too cold in here now? It was too hot men to go and turn the air conditioning on. How many of you are too hot? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you are too cold? Raise your hand. All right. You trade places with them people, it's too hot. Uh, what, I don't know what to tell you to do. Wrap up. Take, don't take your shirt off. Uh, but let's... Uh, we don't want to throw up. Uh, let's, uh, let's think about this just for a few minutes tonight. And I'm going to give you something to think about. we got some of you guys in here tonight that are like this. And I'm going to give you a Bible study on the number 13. A Bible study on the number 13. And I've been praying about this for a while. And in the Bible, 85% of the 13s are connected with evil. 10% are neutral and 5% are good. A thing don't have to be bad 100% of the time to be bad. You know, we're living in a generation where somebody said, yeah, but what about, what about this? You know, they're always bringing up an exception to try to overthrow the rule. An exception does not overthrow the rule. An exception proves the rule. An exception proves the rule there. Like when we say uh, a wicked lifestyle gave this country AIDS. They say, well, I know a man. He lived right and he served God and he got AIDS, so you can't say that. That's the exception. The exception don't overthrow the rule. The exception proves the rule. People say, God drowned the world in Noah's day because of sin and wickedness. Somebody else will come up and say, uh-uh, there was little babies and innocent people there, so you can't say that. He can't. Yeah, you can say that. The innocent always suffer because of the guilty and their sin. Always have. Now, tonight, as I told you this morning, I showed you these numbers here. We're not going to do a study on that tonight. But I showed you that, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years. A thousand years is as one day. God made uh, Adam and Eve here. Uh, he made the permanent second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day. He rested. He rested on the seventh day. Each one of those created days represents a period in history. A thousand years is as one day. So and I showed you this morning. showed you how it uh, uh, represents God Himself, number one. Two would represent division. Three represents the Trinity. Four represents the world. And so forth and so on. But I don't just make that stuff up. There's a reason for believing it. Six is the number of man. Six, six, six is the best man can do. That's Antichrist. Seven is the number of completion. Seven notes on the piano. Seven colors, uh, major colors you paint all the paintings with. The whole creation is stamped with a number seven. It's always six and one or four and three. Divide it up like that. Now you come to the number eight. The number eight stands for new beginning. Always in the Bible. When Noah came out of the ark, he started the population of the world again. You know how many people he had? Eight. The faith, there are seven days of the week. The first day is the same as the eighth day. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday is number one. One and eight is the same. Starting all over again. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. Seven. Do starts all over again. So the number eight always means new beginning. The number nine uh, is, represents the fruit of the Spirit in the Bible. The number ten is the number of the Gentiles. Uh, the number of the eleven, you know, it represents is uh, twelve is Israel, and uh, uh, and the number thirteen represents rebellion. And uh, the other day, somebody said something about thirteen, thirteen, and I said something about, it, and they said, "Oh, you superstitious!" Now, I, listen, them old time people had a reason for what they believed. We're not superstitious, but we are Bible believers. And the number 13 in the Bible is connected with sin, rebellion, trouble, Satan, the Antichrist, all the way through. 
And if you believe your King James Bible, I'm going to show you stuff that's in the King James Bible that you'll never get. In a, somebody said, boy, if we could learn Greek and Hebrew, we'd really learn the Bible. No, if you got the Bible in English, well, you don't need Greek and Hebrew. If you have a Bible in English that's God's Word, then all you've got to do is learn that. Am I right? Say amen. If this is not the Word of God, then we better go learn us some Greek. We'll start Greek classes here tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. But thank God we don't have to do that. Lord, I'd be in a mess. If I had learned Greek, I'd be in trouble. I, thank God we don't. God left us a Bible. So, we have what we call in the Bible tonight, we have the law of first mention. And that means when something's mentioned for the first time, it sets a precedent for history. For example, does anybody in here know where the word beer comes from? The very first time the word beer is ever heard of in this world. Beer. I bet you can stop the man driving a Budweiser truck and he don't know. I bet you can stop a man that drunk a case last night and he don't know. Them, they're ignorant. They don't even know what the Bible. It comes from numbers. And it said, from thence he went to beer, where is the well? And the word, that beer means, comes from the word that means the well. Drink a well dry. And that's what we call the law of first mention. You take this, the, the trouble that we're in in this world with Iraq and Iran and the terrorists. Saddam Hussein, Osama bin Laden, uh, all them people over there in the Middle East that are against Israel. You know what God said about them? You know what the Bible said about them? You know, these people, it's always on the Democrats and always on They said, we want to win the war on terror, but we don't want to win it with guns and bombs. We want to end it with peace talks. If they read their Bible, they would know that's impossible. You cannot have peace talks with terrorists. And the Bible says that Abraham got ahead of God one time, and he got his, uh, his, uh, his wife's maiden, and Hagar, and they had a baby together, and that baby's name was Ishmael. And Ishmael was Isaac's half-brother. And God prophesied of Ishmael. He is a half-Jew, and half, I think she's Egyptian or whatever, and she, he was the father of all them people in Iraq and Iran. Osama bin Laden comes from Ishmael. And you know what God said about his race? God said, he shall be a wild man. And that set the stage. And he said, every man's hand to be against him, and his hand to be against every man. They're against the world, and the world's against them. So that's the law of first mention. Would you like for me to show you the first time the number 13's in the Bible? Turn to Genesis. Now we're going to use our Bible tonight a lot more than normal. Most time you just sit there and let me do all the work. Tonight you're going to work a little bit. Uh, here we're going to get in the Word of God. Genesis. In the book of Genesis chapter 14 tonight, I will show you the first mention of the number 13. Genesis chapter number 14. Keep in mind that when Moses wrote this, when these guys wrote the Bible, there was no chapter and verses. When these men wrote the Bible, it wasn't even divided up into chapters and verses. They didn't even know it. The hand of God was on the Bible. Genesis chapter 14, and let's see, oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, verse 4, is that where it is? Yeah, Genesis 14, 4. Look at it. Twelve years they served Chedor Laomer, and in the third year, they what? That's the first time it's mentioned. Why did God say that? Why didn't He just say they rebelled against that king? In the thirteenth year, they rebelled. How many of you noticed a difference in your girl or boy when they hit thirteen? They say they're, it's like they're a little kid playing with dolls one day. And the next day, it's MTV and cell phones and boyfriends and girlfriends. And in the 13th year, they rebel. 13 has been the number of rebellion from the book of Genesis right on through. It's rebellion. It's trouble. Uh, have you ever noticed there's no 13th floor in the hospital? They don't even put one in it. 
Nobody wants to say I'm in the 13th floor. The 13th, you say, oh, that's just superstition. I don't know about it. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe I, I, I don't want to be on the 13th. There ain't no 13th gate at the airport. I'd hate to say gate 13, preacher. You go down there. Now, now some of them's changing that a little bit now, but most of them still have no 13th floor or 13th gate. I don't know about you. I mean, this don't ever happen no more, but years ago, when I used to fill my car up with gas, I'd have about a half a tank. And it would go, I'd run, 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 run. And it would stop on 666. Have you ever had that happen to you? Son, I'll run it over out in the parking lot before I let it be that. I mean, say what you want to, brother. I'm, I mean, call me crazy. Call me, call me superstitious. I ain't going to pay no 666 for guys. I'm afraid I'll go down the road. Some fool running to me head on. I, that's, probably, that's probably overreacting. But you know there's something different about them two numbers, don't you? 666 and 13. You know they are. Just like the number 7. Now tonight, let's, let's look at some things here uh, this evening. In the 13th year, the Bible said they rebelled. Ishmael was 13 years old when this began to happen. Turn to Genesis 17:25. Genesis 17:25. We see the number popped up the first time said the 13th year they rebelled. Abraham had, uh, had uh, uh, Ishmael by Hagar. And look at Genesis uh, chapter 17. And look at Genesis 17 and verse 25. And let me show you what it says here. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. It's odd that it mentioned Ishmael when he was 13, mentioned Jesus when he was 12. There's actually 13 tribes, counting that baby boy, but one is always omitted. Over in the, in the Old Testament, in the book of Esther, we won't have time to go into this, but let's turn to the book of Ezra. The little book of Ezra back in the Old Testament, that's just beyond Chronicles there, just by Second Chronicles. That's a pretty big book. So you'll see Ezra pop up next. And the book of Ezra, look at chapter 2. And you'll look at Ezra chapter 2 this evening. And I want to show you something here in the Bible. Ezra chapter 2 is given genealogies. And always, you should always read these genealogies. Even though there's two or three pages of names, read them anyway. God's got a blessing in there for you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God shall man live. Do you know why there's so many genealogies in the Bible? Did you know there's like 30 pages of names in the Bible and only two pages given to creation of the universe? Because God's more interested in people than He is the sun, moon, and stars. That's why. And God's interested in His Son. And His Son had ancestors back in here. He's interested in what has to do with Jesus Christ. Not if Mars and Jupiter and stuff like that. Look at Ezra chapter 2, and I'll give you one verse. One guess what verse. You got it. Verse 13. King James translators didn't even realize it. The children of Adonachim... Top of the Antichrist, 660 and 6. Adonachim is a type of the Antichrist in the Old Testament. He has 666 children. What an odd coincidence. You know what Adonachim's name means? Lord of the Rebellion. God put all that in the Bible. So if you'd leave CNN off long enough and get in your Bible, you'd know what's fixing to happen here on this earth in the next few years. That's, he had 666 kids, and guess what? His name is the 13th on the list. Adonikah. Let's move on. Second Chronicles chapter 9. Go back one book to the book of Second Chronicles chapter number 9. And I'm going to show you a verse of Scripture here in the Bible in Second Chronicles chapter number 9. And guess what verse? All right, Second Chronicles chapter 9. The men that wrote the Bible didn't even divide it up into chapter and verses. This is what we call coincidence. Mm-hmm. Second Chronicles chapter number 9, and look at verse 13. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred, three score, and six talents. 
six hundred, three score, and six talents. Look at that. Verse 13. Six hundred is six hundred. Three score is sixty and six. Six hundred and sixty-six talents of gold. Notice what the Bible said. Let's find out when the Antichrist is going to come with that number. Turn to the book of Revelation. You can guess what chapter. Chapter 13 in the book of Revelation. John that wrote the book of Revelation never divided it up into chapter and verses. He had no idea that it was ever going to happen like this. Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. That's three times six, 18. You have three sixes in verse 18, three chapters, verse sixes, three sets of sixes, and look at Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. You got wisdom? We're studying numbers tonight. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Ladies and gentlemen, the mark of the man of the Antichrist is six, six, six. Are you listening to me? That's always been his mark. People laughed about it back in the old days, that now they have it tattooed on their hands. I showed you at the youth rally where people actually have 666 tattooed on their forehead just to prove they hate God and the Bible. They, everything you've got in your house tonight has computer marks on it, and you've got two here and two in the middle and two on each side stamped with six, everything in your house right now. They asked a man one time, they wrote this magazine, and they said, isn't that awful coincidental? Why do you use all them sixes? And they say, well, this has nothing to do with the Bible or prophecy. We simply use sixes because the computer can scan them easily. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to get spooky in here in a minute. How many of you was born on the 13th? Anybody in there? Oh, Lord. Oh, my goodness. That don't necessarily. I said 85% of them's bad. Maybe you're in that 5% that's good. 85% bad. Let's move along here this evening. All right. Turn to Proverbs chapter 2. I don't usually do this. This is the first time I've done this in ages. I usually just haul off and preach to you, but I will give you something to make you think. I hope and get you, get you interested in the Bible where you read it and study it this year. Proverbs chapter number 2. And uh, let's look here for a minute. Chapter 2, you can guess what verse. Uh, Proverbs chapter number 2, look at it. Verse number 13, with 13 words. Who lead the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. That's one of the strong verses. Verse 13, with 13 words. If you use the NIV, none of this will happen. The NIV doesn't have the hand of God as your King James Bible does. Proverbs 2.13, Jeremiah chapter 2, on over to your right. Jeremiah chapter 2, and look here at just verse 13. Jeremiah 2.13, For my people have committed two evils, rebellion, brother, rebellion, They've forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Deuteronomy 13. Back to the book of Deuteronomy. Look at Deuteronomy 13, 13. These are just a few little samples. There's hundreds of them. Deuteronomy 13, 13. Certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you. Rebellion. The children of the devil. Deuteronomy 13, 13. And have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which ye have not known. Rebel against God. Live for the devil. Serve the devil. Rebel against the Lord. Serve Satan. Deuteronomy 13, 13. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 2. On over to your right. 1 Samuel chapter number 2. And look at uh, verse number 12. 1 Samuel 2, 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Somebody count the words in that verse. How 
How many is it? Fourteen? Just wondering. I, I didn't have it marked. I was just wondering. The sons of Belial, they are rebellion. They knew not the Lord. Nimrod, the mighty hunter, was the man who started the rebellion against God, Babylon. He's the thirteenth from Adam. The thirteenth from Adam, if you're writing these down. Judas Iscariot, the man who betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ. Judas Iscariot, thirteen letters. Revelation 17, there's thirteen letters on the great whore of Revelation 17 on her forehead. All right, let's do a little study here tonight. Somebody give me a dollar. I want to see a dollar bill. Anybody got one? One dollar. Thank you, brother. Everybody get your dollar bill out and look at it if you got one. Anybody in here that's got a dollar bill out, let's get it out. And if your neighbor don't have one, let's look at it tonight. Get this dollar bill. You know the people kill you for that right there? That's a, that's a strange piece of paper right there. There's no other piece of paper in the world affects people like that little green piece of paper right there. People will do stuff for that right there that they'd never do for anything or anybody else. They'll kill for it, live for it, uh, die for it nearly. Do anything. A little green piece of paper. That stuff's powerful. You pull that out, people goes wild. You pull one of them out in junior church and all the kids go, Ah! Like that right there. That's true. Now, let's look at it this evening. This is only a one dollar bill. Maybe not much uh, to most of you, but let's look at it closely this evening. The dollar bill, the eagle on the back of it, the eagle on the back has 13 stars around it. It has 13 stripes below it. That eagle has 13 arrows in its left hand and 13 leaves in its right hand. The pyramid on the left side has 13 layers on that pyramid. You say, Brother Danny, that's because we have 13 colonies and all of that. Well, don't you think that's a little odd? Why didn't we have 12 colonies or 14? Or 15. Why did they do it? After all the columns. Have you ever read 1 Timothy 6.10? It says the love of money is the root of all evil. That's why that thing's so loved by people. That's a wicked thing. You know what the Bible calls it? Filthy lucre. You got to have it to live. You got to have it to buy groceries. You got to have it to do it. But that's some, there's some wicked stuff connected with that thing right there. It's dirty. Dirty. The Bible says it's filthy. That's what the Bible says. Filthy. Amen. A lot of these preachers talking about, oh, these people watch these filthy movies, these filthy movies, and you ought not to watch filthy movies, but they're greedy of loving filthy lucre. I know preachers that wouldn't dare go to the movies that love that more than people go to the movies love the movies. Now, don't y'all get quiet on me. I will haul off and preach. Am I right? Lord, I know preachers. I've talked to them every time. Well, how much money is this and how much money? And, we can have, and our church has this much money and our money, 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 money. I'm telling you, brother, I mean, you, if money makes you spiritual, then Donald Trump ought to be the most spiritual guy in town or Bill Gates or somebody like that. Money don't. Listen, people that believe money will do anything will do anything for money. You better watch what place that thing right there has got in your heart and life. You better be real careful. Okay? E pluribus unum on there. Thirteen letters. Mark 7, 21 said, There's thirteen evils in the human heart. Write down, study when you get home, John 13, 13. Proverbs 13, 13. Joshua 13, 13. Isaiah 1, 13. Isaiah 5.13. Isaiah 7.13. Isaiah 9.13. You know what? Listen to me. When I went to school, when I went to school, we started in the first grade and graduated in twelfth grade. They kicked God and the Bible out and said, we don't want it no more. Rebel. And they added kindergarten. you got to go 13 years now. 
The public school system is stamped with the number 13, rebellion. We didn't go to kindergarten. Ain't no sense in going to kindergarten. You say, well, they learn how to read. Well, you can learn how to read in the first grade. Amen, Brother Danny. Y'all brainwashed by our society we're living in. Well, I seen one back there going, amen. That's right, sister. She's a, she's a paying attention to that, sister Haley. Is. Amen. She's back there saying, preach it, Brother Danny. Woo! All the kids bite me because I don't believe in homework. Listen. You know, when I, where, you know how many channels there are on TV? Thirteen. And then they come out with satellite and cable and all that. But, um, but originally, there's 13 channels on the TV. Don't you think that's, it's starting to sound spooky? The Old Testament has 39 books in it. That's 3 times 13 and ends with a curse. Friday 13th, Galatians 3.13, the triple curse. Halloween is October 31st. That's a backwards 13. And every time the devil does something, he always says numbers and stuff, reading, talking, backwards. 13-year-olds are known as rebellious. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Questions? I can't give an invitation. I mean, you're going to come in and ask God to forgive you for being born on the 13th? <laughs> Question or additional comments? There's a bunch more than what I gave you. We just scratched the surface. Yeah. Right. Your body's 66.6 temperature above freezing. 98.6. Huh? Well, that's the average, right? They change it every now and then. People messed up on drugs now. 66.6 above freezing. Ridland stuff makes your temperature go. Brother Jason? Yeah, that's a good one. That's the men of Sodom. Homosexuality is stamped, that number 13. Stamped with it. Y'all? Is that right? New World Order. On what? What is on there? Oh, does it? Where does it say that at? Oh, there. Yeah, I had that wrote down, but I didn't know what it meant. I don't see it. Under the pyramid. There we go. That means New World Order? Has that always been on there? Mm-hmm. And has that been on there since a long time ago? Well, I'm going to have to take my daughter home and look at it a little closer. <laughs> Let's study the 20. <laughs> I know there's wickedness in a $20 bill. Somebody give me one. <laughs> Anybody else? Brother Derek? Let me see. I, got to, I had that on my notes. I don't know how to say it, but I got it. I got it in my notes. I had that thing down. I just didn't mention it. Somebody, what does that mean? You better watch them dollar bills, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all worship that stuff. Um, okay, he asked what that word meant. Everybody be quiet unless you're in this study. We're not fellowshipping. Uh, it has 13 letters. That's all I got. Anybody know what that means? Anuit coeptis. Anybody know what that means? I think it means pay your tithes. Yeah. No. 
Hold on. That's true. Three six. Yep. Oh, there's a bunch of them. I had a bunch of my notes I didn't even read off because I was afraid it might be too long. Anybody else? Question. What do you do when a black cat runs across the road in front of you? Run over it. Same thing you do when a white cat runs across the road. <laughs> oh, that's awful, ain't it? All you cat lovers. Corey just told me today she had a dream about something about the number. What was it? She said, I saw the number 13 up in the sky. She dreamed that yesterday, and she didn't know about it. I didn't even know I was going to do that. And I hollered 13, and everybody took off running. That's why Wilt Chamberlain never got to win a championship. That was his number. He didn't win a championship, did he? Oh, actually, he finally moved. But his number wasn't 13 there, was it? I thought he never won one. Who else is a number 13 in sports? Is there a quarterback? Who? Who, who is Alex Rodriguez? What is it? Oh, that's baseball. Is he any count? On oh, steroids. How many letters are in steroids? <laughs> I was just at D-A-N-N-Y-C-A-S-T-L-E. We The what is... What is MS-13? A gang. I, I don't know who that is. Are they around here? Really? Mexican gang? MS-13. All them illegal Mexicans are in a gang against us? We're in trouble. There's, there's I think, 19,000 Spanish people moved into Burke County now. 19,000. There's only 38,000 total in McDowell County. By the year 2020, they say, poor white trash like us is going to be the minority. <laughs> Anybody else? Brother Ray. Oh, yeah. Always. Always. Amen. Brother Andy. He approves. How'd you know that? Oh, he looked it up on the internet while we were in here having church. <laughs> Today we're living in, ain't it? You watching the you watch the Super Bowl on that thing? I'll throw it out in the parking lot. <laughs> they did up there at New Man of Sound Men was up there watching the ball game one night while I was preaching my head off. Wicked bunch of demons. Anybody else? All right, all right. This to provoke you to study a little bit. I just, uh, you can't, nothing's that coincidental. Nothing's that coincidental. God knows what is, there is something to black cats. There is. The Bible's all that antichrist, like a leopard. He's like a leopard. He's a cat. Cat's eyes are going like that, like a snake, like a serpent. And uh, they're like, he's a cool cat, you know. You know what a, you know what a cat.